and they worship him, but some doubt it. Why would some even doubt? Why would anyone have any doubt that this is Brother Yusuf Ismail, that this is uh, 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 David, and this is Shabir? So uh, they would only doubt if there was some reason to doubt. So what was the reason? And I have put before you that it, it seems that when Jesus appeared to his disciples, there was always some reason for doubting that this was actually Jesus. And uh, finally, uh, what, what are we to think about uh, Mark being based on uh, Peter's account of what happened? Uh, that supposition that Mark is actually based on Peter's account is something that was said by Papias, a second century scholar. He died around the year 150, I believe. So this was several decades removed from the writing of Mark's gospel. We're dealing here with somebody who has not met Mark, but has heard from others that Mark had uh, written the account that he had heard from Peter, though not in, in order, uh, but re reproducing precisely what he had heard. In that case, we, we have uh, a hearsay piece of evidence, and we do not have anything from Mark himself confirming what was the source uh, of his writing of his gospel. And finally, uh, let's uh, think about the guards at the tomb. Matthew is the only gospel again which tells us that there were guards at the tomb. But does, could that have prevented the body of Jesus being taken uh, from, from the tomb in, such, in some way? Well, not really. Dr. William Lane Craig, in his article on the guards at the tomb, uh, points out that uh, there is uh, a logical lapse in, in the narrative. Because think about what has happened. It is, it is supposed that Jesus died on the cross. He was taken down on the Friday afternoon. He was put in this airy chamber, this tomb, and then left there. Everyone went away to observe the Sabbath. The next day is the Sabbath. And this is when the Jews, who were opponents of Jesus, or we should say the Jewish opponents of Jesus, went into Pilate's court and pleaded with the governor that he should put a guard on the tomb because Jesus had said that he will resurrect after three days, uh, so guard it for, until the third day. But uh, Dr. Craig has pointed out that by the time they were requesting this, the body could have already been removed. Dr. Craig is not saying that the body was removed. He believes that Jesus resurrected from the dead. But he did incidentally note this logical lapse in Matthew's narrative. Even though it would appear to some that Matthew's narrative is for the purpose of showing that the tomb was well guarded, it doesn't say that when the guards were placed, they actually looked into the tomb to see if the body was still there. So it could have been a case of bolting the barn door after the horses had bolted. But I have put before you a much simpler case. I have shown you that, in fact, when we look at the uh, narratives that show that Jesus resurrected from the dead and, and, and uh, appeared alive to his disciples, that those narratives are highly questionable. And that, in fact, some scholars have thought more carefully about the sign of Jonah, and they think that in the Q gospel, which was used as a source by Matthew and Luke, the narrative about the sign of Jonah was about Jesus being like Jonah. And some thought that this means that he was raised, uh, not, not so much raised, but assumed, translated into heaven right from his tomb after he had died and placed dead in his tomb, which means that the re resurrection appearances uh, are all uh, doubtful. But Dieter Zeller, in particular, uh, held the view uh, that Jesus was assumed into heaven alive. And that the whole point was just as Jonah was saved alive in the belly of the whale, so too uh, was the Son of Man, Jesus, saved alive, and he was not uh, uh, killed uh, by this uh, method of execution. Finally, if we are to take that uh, view, that Jesus, on whom be peace, was actually raised alive into heaven in a manner similar to Enoch, who was uh, raised to a high station, and to Elijah, who was raised up in a whirlwind, then, in fact, we have a, a, a way of meeting on common ground between Muslims and Christians on this point. And of course, we started out saying it's all about friendship. We have more reason uh, to celebrate our closeness. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you for that, Shabir. I come to an interesting part of this um, particular discussion, and that's a question and answer session. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Uh, peace be um to the Bible, as Jesus said in the Bible. I would like to ask uh, Brother David Sukumbi. You know, in the Bible, it's mentioned in the, in the book of Mark as to prove your salvation, your conviction of Jesus and, and died, from, um, died for your sins and your conviction as to be um, that person 
as ik in een positieve way in Mark 16 verse 17 and 18 as said if you testify truly um, that um, you must you can heal people and you can take up serpents and if you drink any deadly thing it will not harm, harm you in the red letter Bible is in red Jesus word in the RSV it is it is it is not the in other verses to be be perfect I got the, the poison here no and to brother uh, brother <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, you, you, you've had your say. That <laughs> you've had your say. You've had your say. You've had your say. <laughs>